Stretching and shrinking transformations are another couple of types which we'll explore more in depth in this video. In a nutshell, you can think of maybe starting with some sort of parent function and then either stretching it vertically, horizontally, or, or possibly shrinking it in one of those two directions as well. To create one of these transformations where you either stretch or shrink, it comes down to multiplying the function and also how big that number is that you are multiplying by. So first you can think of maybe multiplying on the outside of the function. If you multiply by a number larger than one on the outside, this will stretch it vertically, so it makes it look taller in a lot of cases. If you multiply on the outside by a number between 0 and 1, then it will shrink it. When you try and do these same things to the inside of the function, often they work the opposite as what you think they should. So if you multiply on the inside of a function by a number larger than 1, then it will actually shrink it uh, horizontally. If you multiply on the inside by a number between 0 and 1, then it will actually stretch it horizontally. We'll see this in our examples uh, so you can get an idea of all of these different transformations. So let's start off with this guy. We want a graph 3 times the square root of x and 1 half times the square root of x. Both of these examples involve our square root, so let's first graph that and start uh, using it as our parent function. So I know the square root goes through 0, 0, 1, uh, 4, 2, and 9, 3. So we can consider this our parent function. Not too bad. All right, in our first example, notice how we are multiplying on the outside. So this will stretch it vertically by a factor of 3. Here's how you can figure out where the new function is going to be. You want to keep track of these key points on the original function and their y values. So you'll you know, take all of those y values and multiply them by 3. Let's start at 0, 0. The y value here is 0. 0 multiplied by 3 is still 0. So we'll put that in the same spot. Moving on. The y value here is 1. 1 multiplied by 3 is 3, so we're going to put that at 1, 3. The y value here is 2. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, so we'll move that guy up to 6. And lastly, the y value here is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So every single y value has been multiplied by 3. Well, you want to see that each point is now 3 times farther away than what it used to be. Let's draw this guy in here. So you can definitely see that this graph has been stretched out vertically and it looks definitely taller than what it used to. Now let's multiply on the outside by a number between 0 and 1. So 1 half is a good candidate. We'll do the same thing. We'll take all of the y values and we'll multiply them by this 1 half. So 0 times 1 half starts at the same spot. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. 2 times 1 half is 1. And 3 times a half, 1 and a half. So this will make it look very shallow or narrow. All right. So when multiplying on the outside by a number larger than 1, we stretched it vertically. Multiply on the outside by a number between 0 and 1, and we shrunk it vertically. Let's do this again with some more transformations. Get a new function. Try this all again. So this one I want to graph 1 third x quantity squared and 2x quantity squared. Since both of these involve squaring, I will start with my x squared as my parent function. So 0, 0, 1, 1. Uh, 2, 4, 3, 9. And we got those same points over here. So 2, 4, negative 3, 9. Not bad. This will produce the familiar parabola shape. Alright, so this guy is our x squared. Now both of these transformations here are on the inside, so we're going to affect things horizontally. 
Let's start with the first one. This one says 1 third x on the inside. And since that number is between 0 and 1, this will actually stretch it. So keep note that since we're working on the inside, things are working the opposite as what we think they should. Now, to figure out where we need to put our new points, we're actually going to take all of our x values and multiply them by 3. So the x value here is 0. 0 multiplied by 3 is 0. The x value here is at 1 multiplied by 3 now at 3. x value here is at 2, multiplied by 3, we'll move it all the way out to 6. And the last one up here, x value is at 3, this will move it all the way out at 9. So each x value has been multiplied by 3 and put out into its appropriate spot. So here's half of our new function. Looks like a much wider parabola than before. We can do the same things with the x values on the other side. So here's an x value at negative 1, now it's at negative 3. x value at negative 2, now it's at negative 6. x value at negative 3, now it's at negative 9. And there's the other half of our parabola. Alright, so let's do the other one. This one is 2x quantity squared, so I'm multiplying on the inside by 2, and that's a number larger than 1. So this will shrink it by a factor of 2. That means we'll take every single x value, and we'll actually divide it by 2. So 0 divided by 2 is at 0. The x value here is at 1. Divided by 2, we'll put that at 1 half. x value here is at 2, moving it to 1. And the x value here is at 3, that is going to be at 1 and a half. Alright, do the same thing with the points on the other side. So negative 2, chop it in half. Negative 3, chop it in half. Now we have some good key points and we can draw out our new uh, transformed function. And this one still looks like a parabola, but it's a lot more narrower than the parent function. Alright, so just like that, you can see that you can graph your stretches and shrinks. Just have to keep in mind two things. Uh, if you're multiplying, it's probably going to be a stretch or a shrink. Depending on whether it's on the outside or the inside, it will affect the horizontal direction or the vertical direction. And depending on how big that number is, will really depend whether it is a stretch or a shrink.